What's up, leaders? Welcome back to season two of The Learning Shop at Crowley ISD. I'm your host, Dr. Mike McFarland. If you are new here, get ready. We're on a mission to redefine leadership beyond titles, beyond positions. We want to define really what leadership is for you and me today. Now, we're talking real stories, real inspiration here in the barbershop. But today, we have a legend. We got a legend in the house. Please welcome the one and only Coach Ray Gates from North Crowley. He's the head coach and the 6A 2023 Coach of the Year. But that's not all. Coach Gates is a husband, a dad, a grandpa, and a pit master. And I am a witness to that. It is, he, he's always grilling up a storm for his, for his players or cooking a meal for his family. Coach Gates, thank you for joining us. We're excited to have you on the show. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. appreciate having you here. So, Coach, you know, definitely welcome to the Learning Shop, man. This is a place where we uh, learn, we grow. You know how it is in a barbershop. We just chop it up. We talk about we talk about it, whatever is the, the key topic. And for us, the key topic is really leadership. Like, like really, our whole goal for this for this podcast and for this, this experience is to really redefine what leadership is. And so we definitely, uh, definitely glad to have you here. Uh, hope you're excited to be here as well. Absolutely, I'm definitely honored to be here um, to talk about you know leadership. You yeah. know that's something that is is huge in in our community here at Crowley ISD. And um, you get an opportunity to see that every single day when you step foot in our campuses or in our administration office. Absolutely, man, absolutely. And you've done a done a great job since you stepped foot here in, in Crowley ISD. And so one of the things is, um, you know, I love leadership, man. I've been been studying leadership forever and just love it. And one one definition that really resonates with me and that 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 when I think of leadership, uh, I, I like the definition that Maxwell uses. He says leadership is about influence. Nothing more, nothing less. That's it. That's it. I know you're a Max, Maxwell disciple too. So tell me a little bit about what you believe leadership is before we jump in. Well, yeah, you know, with with leadership, you know, you have to have influence. But you yeah. know, when you talk about influence, you also have to talk about people who are genuine. Yeah. And um, another quote of mine that I love about John Maxwell is that he says that people often follow the leader before they follow the vision. Okay. And so right. there has to be some genuality in that, yeah. in that as well. And so when, when people understand that you care about them, that you'll go the extra mile for them, then you can stand up in, in a room and ask them to do the impossible and they'll do it just because of you and they believe in you. And so I think that, you know, being able to show who you are and that you care about people you know, will also increase your influence and your impact that you can have in your in the rooms that you're in. Man, that's that's, that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm definitely glad to glad to hear you explain it like that because you know you use a couple key words. You said uh, authentic. You know, being real. You know, we we always the kids we always say keep it 100, yeah. keep it real, be real, be yourself, right? Absolutely. And, and and that's critical, man. That's critical to leadership. But you also said another key word. You said impact. You know, you said having influence and impact, man. Talk to me a little bit more about this this concept of impact. Well, impact is is important because it basically says that you can get the job done. Yeah. No matter what it is, that you can get it done. And I think when you have, you know, the support of the people around you and that they believe in you as a leader, you know, it puts you in a position to to go the extra mile for the people that you're leading because they they, they believe in you. They, they're following your light. And so um, you have to be prepared. You have to take, you know, the extra time, you know, to make sure that you're ready for whatever it is that, you know, you're about to embark on. And so um, that preparation, you know, of course, is the, the greatest expression of, of faith. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you got to have the work and, and be able to put that in place. Yeah, yeah. So, man, when I think when I think <clears throat> back to I know you've been here probably three years now, uh, going on four. And when I think back to uh, to you, to your arrival and you coming here, um, you know, we I knew that the head coach of, of North Crowley was going to be an influential position. But you'd always know just because you're in that position, they're not necessarily guarantee that you're going to have the impact, man. But you, you've done a phenomenal job of really having an impact, changing the game, not just at football. Like, football is critical. But you and I know football is really a vehicle right. to actually change lives. And Absolutely. So you, you've not only changed that team, but you have uh, changed the community. Like, you got people proud to be connected to that. So I appreciate you. Appreciate you on that. Thank so, you. again, welcome to the Learning Shop. We always want to start off at this Learning Shop because we know, man, we, we could talk all day. But uh, there's some leadership advice that we want to – I know you have, and I want you to drop these nuggets. We have these, these, uh, uh, these, the, this ten, these ten questions, and it's really, uh, really something that we think is, is pretty fun. 
And so I, this first segment, uh, we're going to bring bring to our audience this insightful uh, perspective on leadership in just 60 seconds. we got about 10 questions. We'll try to get to 60 seconds. And we want our audience to walk away feeling like you do after you get a fresh haircut. Yeah. You know, when you get leave out that, shop, that, yeah. that haircut, how do you feel when you leave out the barbershop? Oh, man, you feel a million bucks. You do, right? You know, you ready to put on your finest and, and go on that interview or, right. or just go into, yeah. you know, your community, That's and right. you feel different about yourself. Yeah, yeah, you you feel it's fresh, you clean. You know, you probably gonna run to the car wash and clean your whip up. You know, and then you ready to go. You ready to get out there? Absolutely, you can, it's, no doubt, no doubt. All right, so you ready to give us some leadership advice? Oh, I'm gonna give my best. All right, start the clock. Here we go. So one of the most pivotal moments in my leadership journey was failure is not final. Wow, we got to come back to that. All right. Number two, the best leadership advice I've ever received is? We already talked about it, but you know, um, leadership is influence. Wow, okay, all right. A challenging leadership decision I had to make was? Not everybody can go with you on a journey. Man, I mean, I'm gonna just start right there and just, just, just riff off those, but we're gonna keep on going. All right, the most important quality I look for in a team member is? Character. Gotcha, all right. The most important play I learned in football that translates to leadership is? Is that everybody has a role and in order for the team to be successful, everyone must execute. Awesome, all right. The biggest penalty I ever faced as a leader was? Probably not trusting my intuition. All right, all right, all right. Cool, all right, man, so hey, I appreciate you for that. That's great, you gave great advice, man. You, you started off with this concept of failure. And what's ironic is when we think of leaders, we oftentimes want to highlight the successes of the leader. And we think the success attracts leadership. But you started off, you said failure is not final. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Well, for me, I think in my journey uh, in leadership, you know, most people, we shy away from failure. Mm. I think if you can personify failure, it would be a monster. It's something that's hideous that most people, when they see it, they turn and run right away from it. And how I look at failure is that I think it shows up to have a conversation. Okay. And what I mean is that whenever you're not successful at something, and if you are bold enough to go up to failure and have a conversation, it will tell you why it showed up. Gotcha. And so for me, it has prepared me whenever I had those conversations and I've become enlightened that there are certain things that maybe I overlooked that I that I didn't perform very well in, mm -hmm. and it allowed me to put a plan in action to be successful for the next time that that opportunity came. Because if you never take a look at failure, to me, I feel like failure is the greatest teacher. If you never take a look at failure, then yeah. you lose part of the equation, and 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 you leave something that could could make you a better person, could make you a better coach, could make you a better leader, could make you a better father, whatever it is. Yeah. If you don't study failure. Everybody loves to talk about success, but failure really shows you who you are in those moments. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's 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 make a transition now and just talk about since that's such a critical uh, 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 attribute that you have, a critical issue for you as developing leaders. In developing leaders, is making sure that that failure is not final. How have you used that, or how have you employed that with your players? Well, you know, when we when we are in practice or we're in game and we're making corrections to whatever it is that our expectations are, mm -hmm. you know, we want to make sure that our kids understand, first of all, that at our, you know, organization and our program, that it is a safe it's a safe space for them to fail. Mm -hmm. Like I want you to go out there and fail. Absolutely. Because for us, I believe that, you know, Failure is only an opportunity to learn and to grow. Yeah. And if you can learn and you can grow from your failures, you become a better person. You add a tool into your tool bag. Yeah. And so we want them to go out and be who they are, their God-given ability and talents that we can't coach, and we want them to go out and play as hard as they possibly can. And in the midst of all of that, there are going to be opportunities where they do fail. Yeah. And then we get a chance to come back and we get to tell them, Here's the reason why you fail. We were having that conversation with failure, yeah. and they're gaining that valuable insight. Yeah. So the next time they're in that situation, they know what they should do and how to perform. Yeah, man, I, man, I love that because, you know, what you're doing is uh, right now you're using these experiences to really demystify failure for kids in their life. So when it, when it happens to them in the future, they'll know how to get over it. And uh, so, yeah, that's good stuff, man. I tell you, you know, failure is hard, man. It, it's, it's uh, you made me, as you're talking, man, I'm just thinking about all the different times I failed. And it felt bad. 
in the moment. In the moment. You're right. But you look back on it, you're like, man, that happened for a reason. Well, when you when you fail, most of the time, you know, it's kind of like that old saying, you know, you're too close to the trees to see the forest. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure that comes with failure. Mm-hmm. And if it's of anything of value, when you don't perform at things that have a high cost, yeah. that brings a lot of pressure. Absolutely. When you fail at things that don't have a high cost, it doesn't have a lot of pressure. Right. And so when you're in those moments when everything is on the line and you don't come away with the results that you want, there's a lot of pressure and people don't know how to handle that pressure. Yeah. And so that's also part of it. But when you can change your perspective and look at failure as a teacher, mm-hmm. giving us an opportunity to look at something and to learn and to grow from it and become better, then it ultimately makes us better. Yeah, yeah, awesome, man, awesome. It's good stuff, good stuff. <coughs> so, man, let's, let's, let's now take a step back and, and go back to your, your, uh, your, your childhood. Growing up in Shiner, Texas. Yes, sir. Is that how you say that, Shiner? Yeah, that's it right. It is. Yeah, all right. Shiner, te- te- so you were only child. I am. Right? I know your 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 mom was a minister, right? Yes, yeah, she okay. is. Okay, all right. Or is a minister, mm-hmm. all right? So what values did your family uh, instill in you that shaped your coaching philosophy? Well, in my household, so if you're from a small town, you, you just know that everybody knows everybody. People that live in my community went to school with my parents. They know my family. They know what my family stands for. And so I had a very strict line that I had to walk in my home. And then when I was in the community, the people knew my family and knew our values. And so whenever I was with the people that you would consider be the wrong crowd or not Mm -hmm. doing what I should do, people in our community would always say, you know, Sandra and Doug would not approve of that. So I was always in. A, I always had a spotlight, you know, on me because of the values that my family have in the community that we live in. And so for me, growing up early in my childhood life, sports for me has always been around because my dad, um, you know, he played on a softball team, you know, and so as as early as I could walk, I was always at the baseball field. That was my first sport. He played in, you know, a, a 35 and over men's basketball league. And then my dad, he's still to this day, he's a, he's a high school official. He's been officiating football, basketball, girls softball for over 40 years. And so for me, I was always in a competitive environment. I was always around sports, which you know kind of creates, you know, those, those intangibles that you need for leadership. And so when you walked in my house, we had a five-tier trophy case that was full of trophies. We had over probably 100 trophies in my house. So excellence and hard work and dedication and all those things that we talk about, yeah. I saw that every day when I woke up. Yeah. And then my dad, you know, going to work, you know, he's still, my dad's still working at the same place. In Shiner, there are two places that kind of, it employs the town. Yeah. It's it's the brewery, which is Shiner Bach Beer. Yeah, That's what most people about know that. us about. The <laughs> yeah. beer is brewed in my hometown. Okay, and then there right. is, um, who's right. been there for over 100 years. And then there is a, a wire industry that my dad, he's a welder at. Okay. And it's been there since 1898. Okay. And so that influence, when you have two businesses like that in your hometown, and it, and it employs majority of that town, and they have that long-term success, think about the leadership to have a company, two companies that have been, you know, in your 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 community for a hundred years that people worked at, yeah. and then those are the people that you see in your community. So, yeah. a lot of that kind of flows from from all of that in, in my childhood growing yeah, gotcha, up. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, all right, all right. So you have eighteen years of coaching experience. I do. Yeah, it's a long time, man. It's a long time. So, so tell me about the most significant leadership lessons that you've learned, and then how has it impacted you and and your approach to coaching? Well, I think. When I when I wake up and I and I come to work every day, I I, I want to make sure that I am the type of leader that I would want to follow. Okay. And so I think about my experiences, good and bad, for the people that I've worked for. I think about the things and the qualities that they they had that made me excited as an assistant coach, you know, as a teacher to walk into that building yeah. and, and, and to want to produce for the people that were my superiors. And then I also think about the things that, you know, under their leadership that I that I didn't like. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I try to take all of that, the good and the bad, and I try to to, to put that in play for the people that, you know, I am, um, right. you know, placed, you know, uh, you know, in charge of, if you will, um, as a leader of, of, of that football program there at North Crowley. And so my, my biggest goal every day when I get there is to empower people. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm not a micromanager. 
If, if I assign you a job, I, I expect you to give me your best. Um, and, and I think probably the biggest thing that I had to learn in that in, in this position is that there is an art to delegation. Mm -hmm. You can't delegate everything to everybody. And that means that you have to learn who people are and what their strengths and their weaknesses are to set them up for success. So it's a lot that goes into it. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so going into your third year uh, <sighs> at, at North Crowley, you transformed this team like into a top top ranked program in Texas, like number two. I think you're number one, but you you know we number we'll say number two right now. Yes, sir. Um, can you share how leadership has played a pivotal role in this success? Well, you know it, it starts with a vision. Yeah. And if you don't have a vision, then you don't have a destination or a target to shoot to. Right. Um, and so coming in, it was all about casting the vision for us. And it starts simply with just kind of our core beliefs of who we are. Um, and it's a, it's a biblical verse that, that we, you know, kind of cite to, and, and that's Galatians 6 and 9. And it's, you know, do not become weary in doing good, for you will reap a harvest if you faint not. And so everything in our program is built around kind of that core principle of doing your very best. Mm -hmm. Because if you do your very best, again, talking about those principles, those things will show up in your life. It will show up in this program. It will manifest itself at the appropriate time. Uh, and so we're, we're really, really big on how we approach every single day. We're, we're, the, 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 the team members on the team understand their role, but most importantly, I think what we've been able to do is to make sure that the, the goal is more important than the role and getting people to buy into that. Absolutely, absolutely. That's good stuff, man. That's good stuff for sure. So, uh, you know, uh, with, with 25 students holding Division I offers, as Division I college offers, What's your approach to teaching players about, about uh, exceeding expectations and embracing a growth mindset? Talk to me a little bit more about that. Well, I think the expectations that most people have for us, you know, they're lofty expectations. But for me, I've always, you know, been one to have expectations higher for myself than what other people can put on us. And right. so in our program, that's kind of the way we're constructed. Everybody sees the, the success that we're having. You mentioned we're the number two team in the – in the state, we're a number 10 team in the country now. Um, we've done a lot of firsts that have never been done at North Crowley and under my tenure here. We've never lost a, a home game, you know, since I've been here. Not a home game, sorry, a regular season game since I've been here. You know, we, we're doing so many things that, you know, nobody thought that we would do. Right. And for us, it has become an expectation. Yeah. We, we, we set our goals high and we, and we thrive, you know, every single day to go and chase those those dreams and to chase the goals that we have set for our kids. Uh, and so I think it's important that every single day that we come in with a, with a renewed approach because we talk about, you know, making sure every single week that we step on the field that we're a better version of ourselves this coming week than we were last week. And that helps us to, to kind of set – markers, if you will, to where we are, you know, um, as evolving throughout this season and evolving as a program. Yeah, yeah. So, man, you're doing, doing an awesome job. When you talk about vision, I'm glad you mentioned that because I remember having a conversation with you at the very beginning, probably mid midsummer or the beginning of last year. And I said, Coach, what you think? And you said, Doc, we're going we gonna to end up playing Duncanville. And, and, you know, you walked away and I walked away and I'm like, yeah, I hope we are. But I'm like, oh, Gates just, he's just hyped. He's excited. <laughs> I called Coach Wilson. I said, Coach Wilson, Gates, you know, Gates pumped up. He said we're going to be playing Duncanville. He's like, well, we'll see. And we were sitting up in the stands on the top row against Duncanville. I'm like, yeah, yes, we sir. saw. Yes, but, sir. And, you know, you told me this year uh, that, that, you know, your goal is to get back to that game and then get to that final game. And so, I, believe me, I, I believe you now. For sure. <laughs> yes, sir. Man, we've been proud of, uh, proud of again, what, you, what you've done at, at, at Crowley. Uh, at North Crowley, uh, in, in our district in general, like you have, number one, you showed up, you made an impact. You showed up, you had, you used your influence, and you took the initiative to really change not only that, that school, not only that team, but that community. And so, man, I'm grateful for you. I appreciate your leadership. appreciate you uh, You definitely uh, joining, joining us today. So the last thing uh, is uh, what legacy do you hope to leave in North Crowley beyond wins and check wins and, and – and championships, what is a legacy that you want to you wanna leave uh, at North Crowley? Well, your legacy is in the people. That's right. You know, and the type of people that you can help produce. You know, when we talk about, you know, Galatians 6 and 9, we talk about planting seeds. And I, I envision 
our coaches, our support staff, the people that, you know, on our campus, you know, as farmers. And our kids are the soil. And we get an opportunity every day to plant good seed into good soil. And sometimes when you plant seed, we know that every seed has its its season. It has its time of harvest. And for some of the seeds that we plant, we get an opportunity while our kids are here. We get a chance to actually see those those seeds come to fruition. We get an opportunity to reap the fruits of that labor with our kids. And then there are some of those seeds that we plant that we just are the planters and somebody else will get an opportunity to water it and somebody else will reap the benefits. And so I think long-term when you talk about legacy is when you see your kids that you had in your program come back 10, 15 years from now, being productive citizens in society, um, talking to us and saying, coach, man, you know, our core values being mentally tough, accountable, selflessness, and being disciplined. Like I still use that today. Hearing our kids say, man, coach, when you talk to us about, you know, principles over feelings, like I I still remember that, like my life is a principle-based life and I don't operate based on how I feel. And and, and those things that, you know, you you utilize, because as you said er earlier, Football is just a vehicle that we get an opportunity to make these impacts and these daily deposits with our kids. And so I think when you look at it and, and, and I get an opportunity to sit back and reflect over my my career, that the, the kids that I had an opportunity to coach, the coaches that I had an opportunity to coach, that, that they really, truly see that we cared and we loved them behind their own comprehension probably in the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. So man, thank thank you, man, for for joining us today. This is this has been been great, great conversation. And so to our listeners, to our amazing listeners, thank you for joining us as well. Hopefully you've heard some things or, or heard a nugget, received a nugget or two about leadership. Uh, we definitely, I definitely have, and and uh, have been trying to make mental notes. So I'll go back and watch this. But also, I want you don't forget to like com- and comment on this episode. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for updates. We appreciate your support and engagement. Until next time, keep leading, learning, and growing. Appreciate you, Coach. Absolutely. All right, good luck, man. Good luck Friday night. Go get them. Yes, sir.